the screen at the moment you can see a very simple terrain uh, but with some interesting features in terms of the overhangs and the way it leans. So let's have a look at how we're going to make this. Starting point is to create a terrain. And what we're going to do is we'll just reduce this down to 100 meters just so that it's easier to work with. And I'm going to stretch it vertically. So you can see as soon as we stretch it vertically, we've got some interesting peaks going on in this terrain but what we want to do is we want to adjust it slightly first of all I'm just going to load a material so we can see how it behaves once we start manipulating this terrain and we're going to look at this button here which is the twist button what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and activate the side view and I'm going to draw your attention to the Z and Y axes shown down here the reason I'm doing this is it will make it easier for you to understand how we're going to move this. So if I look up here, we've got Y to X, Z to Y and Z to X. I want to work in the Z to X axis. X doesn't appear down here, so that's the axis that I'm going to twist it in inside elevation. So I'm just going to grab the arrow and drag so as you can see, we're deforming the mountain, we're twisting it down until we get to more or less a shape and an angle we're quite happy with. And if I rotate, you can see what we end up with. And I'll just do a quick preview render. And you can see we've got already quite an interesting rock formation in itself. Um, a rock formation like this in the desert possibly wouldn't be quite so angular, would be a little bit more um, eroded by the wind. So I'm just going to double click the terrain and I'm going to look at the effects. And I just want to round all the edges off, so I'm going to use the diffusive button, ensuring that the rock hardness is set down to soft so we get maximum effect. And if I right click on diffusive, it gives us a, a chance to see how many times this button is going to react. So I'm going to do 10 operations on this. OK. And you can see now we've got a much smoother um, eroded looking formation. Obviously, you can do any amount of actions on this you like. You can also um, edit the, uh, the function editor. Just be aware that when this terrain first loaded into the scene, this node would not have been there. That has simply been added because of the diffusive um, erosion that we've added. If we want to get back to an uneroded, we can just click delete and that will disappear. So let's click OK and let's do a quick render and see what we've got. As you can see, we've got a much more rounded terrain. Um, in this particular instance, just very quickly, because I don't like the way the, the striations in the rock is, are, are forming. So I'm just going to edit this material a little bit further. And I'm just going to just rotate the two functions that I'm using so that we get the striations running in a, in a better alignment along the the lean, as it were, of the rock face. Now you can see it makes a lot more sense. Just quickly, uh, as this is a very, very quick tutorial, it's worth mentioning that the material I've set up is two image-based textures, one of sandstone, one of some sand taken on my local beach. And all I've done is I've made it a mixed material and I've looked at the influence of environment. So Material 2, which is the sand, wants to be at low altitudes. I want it on more or less flat surfaces. And you can see I've moved the distribution or the proportions of the two quite a way over to the sandstone type material, just so that I get a better distribution as we saw in the image. So we end up with sand down at low levels and lots and lots of exposed rock. I hope you find this useful. 
Don't forget to check us out on social media and, of course, YouTube for further tips and tricks from Eon Software. Thank you. Bye-bye.